answer those questions. Uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I call the Honourable Tracy Martin. Uh, kia ora. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, to respond to some of the questions from my honourable colleagues, um, uh, Honourable Mr. Nash, Stuart Nash, he answered two. He asked two questions. First of all, he wanted to know why we were um, and if we were just willy-nilly getting rid of um, transactional councils. And just to um, inform the member, pr uh, around about a hundred years ago, we had. Um, Climatation, climation, climatation, acclimatisation, acclimatisation councils, uh, societies, acclimatisation societies, which then, around about 1990, were transitioning through to be the forest and game uh, council that we're talking about today. So those transitional councils were in place for less than three years. They no longer exist because now we have forest and game. Um, so it's really a tidy up around a piece of legislation for something that is no longer required. He also queried um, with regard to clause 16.3 and um, he went back to the 1953 Act and, and said that he felt that the, the section we were referring to had already been removed. Um, the reality about the amendments inside this piece of legislation, they are technical amendments. In, um, in the Act that we are amending, there were two meanings given to licences. Um, and so what is happening in this piece of legislation is a piece of clarity around the fact that we are talking about game licences. So it was, um, it was a, bit of a, um, a bit of an anomaly or a bit of a slip up in the, pre in the act that we are now amending and this is to tighten it up. So, um, so that's an answer to that, Mr Nash, on that. With regard to electronic voting and um, discussions around, I take on board the honourable member's suggestion, it's a hot topic, it's a hot topic um, uh, at the International Parliamentary Union, for example, will nations move to online electronic voting and so on and so forth. And it is good to have little um, sections, I suppose, of New Zealand trialling these, uh, trialling electronic voting. I note that it is, uh, there is dual, there's a dual voting opportunity. Uh, so some by post and some by electronic mail. I will mention, however, to the member, and quite rightly, it is something we, we need to watch and see about the restrictions and the, um, the opportunities for misuse or hacking. Um, will people issue themselves a number of phishing licences um, illegally by hacking into the system? Uh, and I think it's something, or sorry, not they won't issue themselves licences, I suppose, uh, this is about voting. So will they elect themselves through some sort of um, illegal hacking type of voting to be on the Fish and Game Council? And it's something I think the council needs to be very wary of. Uh, so um, I think it's, at one, and so while that is not a country's election, so therefore it's not quite as, it's, the outcome would not be as serious, um, it's, a, it's a way that we can test these mechanisms. I pick up on the member from the Green Party's previous contribution around this particular issue and um, what she suggested, which was hacking into the um, favourite bird of the year competition and I would have to point out that the fact that if the Ruru got 113 votes over the Takahe at only 855 for a bird who can't be seen to then get more votes for a bird that can definitely be seen and is one of our iconic birds then I think there are questions that do need to be asked around electronic voting and it's something we definitely need to keep our eye on. I call Willow Jean Prime. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I too would like to speak to...